Mr. Shab, sorry for your loss. Okay, guys, so I am back for another episode of Into the Bappa Verse. Let's just start the show with the intro clip, as always. Let's do it. The energy that it's like, it's I, like, it's like you're the you're in the app. It's like you're almost like yet, yeah. Mr. Shab. All right, guys. So on this episode, we're gonna get into Brendan Shab paying for Brendan Callen's facelift episode 968 i'm gonna just find some of the best uh clips from the friend that gets subreddit and i'll give you some context maybe i'll show you a little bit of you know s extra so you can kind of understand it maybe it's kind of hard to understand but in this episode mostly it was about brian callen going uh to the ufc event uh the pay-per-view with uh volkanovsky and tapora Seemed like uh, Brendan did not get invited. He seemed pretty sour about it. He seemed pretty jealous. A lot of projection throughout, throughout this whole episode. And um, quite negative about the UFC. The shop show, he was already talking shit about the UFC. The UFC 300 uh, main event. And how it was, uh, you know, it was just, he was not blown away, apparently. So, there's this one right here. This uh, post. That, this with UFC f***ed up. And you can see it with their with their the the placement of certain fights on UFC 300. UFC fucked up. They're they're too big. They're too fancy now. They're not paying attention to details. And UFC 300 would show you this. They stacked 298. They stacked 299. And 300, which they should have been planned for a year ago, was a byproduct. And they're scrambling. They're scrambling to get things done. But it just kind of doesn't make sense because he's like, all these pay per views are stacked up, but all this and you can't stack up the 300 one like all like from 97 to 300 they're all good but then this one is just the lackluster one but when you look at all the cards they're all pretty good i mean i i'm not complaining honestly like well what do you what, did you want connor to return and and fight michael chandler I mean, like that's i think that's what he th he thought that was going to happen it showed max always just engaging makes no fucking sense nobody's asking for it Everyone loves Max Holloway. He's probably going to get destroyed. We don't want to see it. We don't. What's it do for the division? It moves nobody forward. Everyone stays lukewarm on it. Max Holloway, by all means, should be the guy fighting Topiria next. That's a huge fucking feather in Topiria's cap. Okay. Max goes out there and gets so much brain damage from Justin, the murderer of Gaethje. That's out the window. So Max Holloway's not an option. Okay, so I guess we're going to do the winner of Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega. Yair in Spain, that makes sense. Spanish speaking. We just saw Yair get absolutely destroyed by Volkanovsky. Okay. Max Holloway was the choice, but they didn't plan it out. They fucked up. Max Holloway's your choice. That should be the next guy. But he's, he's on UFC 300 fighting a fight that makes no sense for anybody. They panicked. They agreed to all these fights. Yeah, it seems like a stretch to me. I mean, all the all the matches are great. Like honestly, um, there's just not not much to hate. And he has to be um, a contrarian here and say that it's terrible. But I think the majority online will say no, bro. Like all like what do you, what else do you want? Do you want Brock Lesnar to come back? Is that what you want? <laughs> Kudos because he's the smartest tool in the shed. Now let's get back to this episode. Um, let's start out with the first clip. And this is Brennan inviting himself to Brian's uh, dinner with Tim Kennedy and some other guy. Here's this clip called Serial Self Inviter Bapa. Because I left something. Then I, then I remember how I said, I have to go back anyway to my Airbnb because I left something on the No, I knew you were lying. So I ignored that because you just wanted to take a nap. Did I went, you know nah, I was lying? Yeah, of course I did. You knew I was a liar. Yeah, you, I forgot something. Now you did it. I just needed a 20-minute nap. Yeah, you not go. happening on my schedule. He goes, nah, <laughs> yeah, you just push yourself. So now I have to go have dinner with Tim Kennedy, and he goes, I'll come. He wasn't invited. And I was like, that's fine, of course. But I was like, that means he's going to be with me, and I can't go back and take a nap. The, come on, bro. This, this dude's, like, about to be 70. So let him take a nap. Let him rest.
What's paying your life? Here's uh, Brian talking about his experience going into the event. Um, Brandon just seems to kind of like shit on him for maybe thinking he got some shitty seats. So this clip is called Bapa. Would you abandon your family to sit cage side at a big UFC pay-per-view and walk in late so you get in eyeballs? <laughs> Shut the f we walked in about seven o'clock, sat down for the first, for, we, we caught the final prelim fight. I, you then, know what I was going to ask you? I was going to yeah. do a test. I would say, when did you get to the arena? Casuals get there between 6.45 and 7.30. Yeah, I got there about 6.30. You, you just said before the... Yeah, I got there exactly. You got there seven. Six, you got 6.26, there seven. actually. You got there about 7. No, no, I got there, at, I, I parked at 6.26. Uh, and then came in, um, but good we seats sitting. Well, I don't know. We were right behind Joe Rogan and Michael Bisbing and, and John Ennick. So I don't know if that's good. It just <laughs> depends. Can you see it great there? <clears throat> it's a good, that's a very good. Cause point. you cause listen, it's fun to sit Kate side and Joseph Rogan's our buddy. You're behind him. Brandon is just trying to find some sort of angle to shit on Brian, right? Like he's like, where were you? Like at the bleeders or like, no, Brian was like, no, no, no. I'm actually, like, getting blood on my freaking shirt. Like, that's how close I am. Hate to spoil the thing here. The best seats are not there because you have the, the pillars. Mm. You have a lot of people in front of you. You usually want to be, now, Grant, if you're a celebrity stuff, but you want to be kind of in the first, like, not first row, but we're just above. So your eyesight. Yeah, no, for, for, for us, I, it was great. You're I mean, good? Seeing him that close. You're and my smaller. son, for my son, too, it was so awesome. Oh, I bet. You know? And then just, I, I said hi to Dana. Brandon is just trying to just get some angle in here to shit on Brian, you know? I mean, he's just sour for for not being invited. I mean, there's like a rumor that he's like blacklisted or he's been banned by Dana because of all the, all the things that he says. So next clip, this was called Bapa Knows All the BMXers. Still tries to find a way to shit on Brian. And then now I saw our boy, uh, Sean Merriman. He was there. Oh, yeah. Well, I even tweeted out, I said, you're going to show, I didn't say Sean Merriman, but when they showed Sean Merriman, I'm like, there's definitely going to show my boy, Callan. Mm. Maybe give Fire and Kid a plug, but you got to remember the UFCs, not our biggest fans. Mm. Dana blacklisted him. That's just a rumor, right, though, but it makes sense. No, I, I said, you're going to show all these people and not show Brian, and we're going to pretend Brian's not there in the front row? Okay, yeah. UFC 298. Well, maybe I'm not a celebrity anymore. You ever think of that? Mm. But anyway, um, it was good. A couple other people were there uh, that I saw. Um, BMXers and, you know, I don't know. BMXers? Yeah, some famous Oh, BMX I wouldn't know guy. BMXers, right? Nor would anybody in here. Bro, Brandon just tries to find any kind of way to shit on this dude. Yeah. BMXers? Famous? Well, he's like the most famous one I heard. Who? Oh, your boy, um, Miles Teller was there. Yep, I saw Miles. I didn't say hi, but, you know, I don't That's know. my guy. But... Love him. Rampage was there, too, yeah? I didn't see him. Rampage was there. Did you? How do you know Miles Teller? I know Miles when I first moved to L.A. He's bet. Oh yeah, yeah. I know Ryan. Williams. Yeah, he's there. Ryan's the yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, Ryan's the man. Yeah. Um, Brandon just doesn't know when to shut up and still continues to antagonize the UFC. Here's another clip of him antagonizing the people that attend the UFC. Callan said that he he met a uh, Zuckerberg and other people there this is clip is called brendan burning all the bridges there you go there's that you got mark zuckerberg they're like mm, yes oh yes yeah everyone's yeah. like oh zuckerberg ah, la, ah, la, la. Yeah. And i mean look it all it just shows is that the ufc is very worldwide very global and and it's um appealing to everybody not only you know like alpha dudes but also the nerdy guys like they enjoy watching combat sports and you got dana there worth a billion you got rogan there versus yeah. five, 500 million yes you got brian there versus two thousand dollars yeah and then you got like all these billionaires right yes. like and these celebrities and they're just watching the most violent men in the world going yes yes well that's how it and they're feels. gonna jump on their private jets it's just a weird vibe this is just uh a weird take from this dude but no, it, it, he's just trying to be funny like he's making it sound like he's like king king caesar that and then you know in in, in gladiator mm -hmm. when caesar does this and he's with the lead but there were also other moments where he was very bitter like this clip um this clip is called bitter bitter bapa hold on i don't mean and i love this i love the ufc yeah me too i bleed the ufc 
I've given everything to UFC. Yeah, I have that's, part of the, that's part of the thing. I right? live the UFC. Yeah. I support them in every way possible. Yeah. I, I fought there for years. I love the UFC. Give me my following. I love it. But And there's nothing better than a big pay-per-view. But it, the elephant in the room is all these guys. Are is fun. boxing different? No. So the context of that is that the UFC was going to put Wanderley Silva into the Hall of Fame. And Brendan goes on a rant saying that, look at these freaking legends, how shitty that the UFC has treated them. And yes, it's true. But, you know, like, this is just like, we've known this already. This is kind of old thing. This is an old news. Like, just going to have to say it like every time, like, couldn't you like put this on your in your pocket? Because you could have just said, hey, man, you had, you had a great time at the UFC, Brian. Like, did you enjoy it? But like he does not want to make it brian's moment he wants to make it his where he makes it a much bigger deal than just enjoying and watching a fight than and then trying to turn it into something even more negative and you know saying that the downsides of fighting but everything has a downside in football or in any kind of contact sport like there are going to be damages there's going to be concussions and you know brandon is just shitting on it because he's just projecting he's mad that he didn't get invited so he's doing that right like it just makes sense he's another clip of him saying that all ufc champions have c-e-t <laughs> which is the way he says it but it's c-t-e -E. then you know everybody Dark who's body. there is holding that belt is eventually if they stick around long enough the only one i can think of is maybe gsp but if they stick around long enough that will happen now they're appreciated when the camera shows up on their face like Chuck Liddell, you know, but overall. Was it worth it? Overall. Name someone they showed on camera that didn't have CT. Mm. I'll wait. Those legends? Oh yeah. Uh, then you know everybody who's mind. there. So yeah, I mean like uh, that's another um, clip there that shows that, you know, he's also advocating for, you know, like uh, better money but also making fun of the veterans mr shab so i'm gonna end this episode off with brandon beefing it with nina drama or nina marie danielle is i think i think that's her name brandon talked about something that happened with a streamer called uh sneeko and sneeko uh sparred with sean strickland sean strickland beat the hell out of him uh, Brandon suggested that was a setup by the UFC because how could they let a streamer or like a non-fighter or just some sort of regular dude like out in there with Strickland a madman and you know give him a really bad beating and and saying how it's faked and how it's orchestrated and Nina replied with you know it's like you know bullshit and so then Myth. Nina Drama and Brandon Schaub go back and forth on X. The Myth. Nina Drama and Brandon Schaub go back and forth on X. The back and forth started after Brandon Schaub suggested the UFC arrange the Sean Strickland vs. Nico sparring session. Here's the thing with this. So this is at the Apex. So it's it's at the it's a UFC controlled content. You have Force Griffin there. You have uh, Jake Shields is there as well. So this is all orchestrated. This is all designed. It is just weird to me. I, you know, I mean, I don't know the Cinco kid. I know he's talking shit about Mikey. That's our boy. It's weird to have a guy who is a former world champion just kind of tee off on him, um, even though he asked for it. Ignorance is bliss. The kid's an idiot. Clearly, if you're gonna get beat up by Sean Strickland, uh, it's just something weird about it. It's all orchestrated by the UFC. It's just a weird route they're going, you know? Like, all this had to be, like, Sneeko had to get okay from the UFC, from Dana White. They had to call Sean Strickland. Like, this wasn't like he, sh it wasn't like he showed up at Sean Strickland's gym in Orange County. The, the UFC had to be okay. This, I'm sure he had to sign some, you know, waivers. It just, I don't know. It feels weird. They start beefing it in the, in, on Twitter or X, and they... Uh, then Sean Strickland gets in there and he replies to that and Nina reacted to Schaub's comments tweeting here's the thing about Brendan Schaub I love the guy but this take has to be more stupid than Sneeko agreeing to spar Sean Strickland lol Brendan do you really think Dana White and the UFC would risk it all for Sneeko and Strickland I have the answer it's hell no laughing my ass off 
Schaub replied, listen, here's the thing about Nina Marie. Love the girl, but she's new. How long are we going to pretend the UFC has morals and this is such a reach? Maria, you attend every power slap event for starters, which was created by the ownership of the UFC. Legit MMA journalists are banned for not giving cupcake questions from UFC events. Don't even get me started on fighter pay. Assuming UFC is open to a YouTuber getting his ass whooped is far from a bad take. A lawsuit doesn't scare the UFC. Please look into the current lawsuit from over 100 plus former fighters. I can go on how this is far from a reach. Still love ya. Nina responded by posting this vid captioned, I don't know, I just got here, at Brandon Schaub, I'm still new, lol. How many genders are there? I don't know, I just got here. Sean Strickland also chimed in and blasted Schaub writing, when did the world become so f***ing soft? They used to let kids box in high school, they used to raise men. Why did you stop it? That was the most badass thing Sneeko has ever said, so he got hit in the head, big f***ing deal you pussy. But again, we've all seen you fight, so laughing my ass off. He followed up with, laughing my ass off, they act like I murdered a man. So a man wanted to fight and got beat up. So f what? That's how you become a man? Don't belittle him. He took his ass beating like a man and will be better for it. Good job. I was impressed. And the recent uh, fighting the kid, um, Sanaz, the, the newest assistant, she puts on one of the current events and it's relating to Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, getting in with a little bit of a confrontation with Sean Strickland. He doesn't want anything to do with Sean Strickland. And so let me show you that clip here to end it off. I love it, and I and I, yeah, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me pee real quick. Wait, Machine Gun Kelly seen in confrontation with yeah. USC fighter Sean Strickland? It's really funny. Did they really have a confrontation? Well, like Machine Gun Kelly goes to like shake his hand and he says like, why do you dress like that? And Machine Gun Kelly's like, come on bro, stop. And he's like, no, why are you dressed like that? And then he goes on to be like, you're with Megan Fox. Like, are you kidding? This is how this is going down? And put out a couple tweets about it, it was funny. And he's like, Megan Fox, if you need help, let me know. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, so he leaves the room and, the, and when he comes back, he does not say anything about Sean Strickland and just says, Oh, machine gun killing. He's a cool guy. I love Megan Fox, right? Off your first order. He's like, just like, what the fuck are you wearing, you fucking vampire? It's like, <laughs> machine gun killing's like, okay. You see my girl? <laughs> yeah, that's what Sean then says later. He's like, what? <laughs> What's happening in the world? Megan Fox is with who? You can see the what Brian's uh, body language right looks like he just looks uncomfortable it's like what <laughs> what's happening in the world megan fox is with who brandon must have told him something right like he must have said something like oh man like freaking strickland is talking shit a super talented guy i she's done a lot of work to herself too though she doesn't look that great anymore Ooh, yeah, she's, she's older but she's all this is the only time you're not gonna see brandon interrupting anything because he knows he's in the shit. He's going to try to cool things off, not try to be on Strickland's bad side because of the whole Twitter beef that he had with uh, Nina. I mean, you, if you guys know that Nina and Sean are good friends, so... We interviewed Sean Strickland a number of times as we scroll through her Twitter feed here. As we scroll up and you keep seeing stuff with Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland got a bodyguard. Sean Strickland here. So the big video that everyone's talking about was as the main event was going on and the judges' scorecards were being read, we've got this right here. Three judges scored this contest, 49-46 for the winner. Are you done? Sean Strickland! Sean Strickland! Sean Strickland. So we, we saw that, and now we see this. The American dream still exists. So proud of the homie Sean Strickland. Never doubted you for a second. So we see her doing this media stuff, and we see her doing you know, interviews with Sean Strickland and all that other kind of stuff. She's backstage at the UFC, obviously. And then she put out a tweet today 
20 hours ago. So apparently men and women can't be friends. LOL. Yeah, guys, uh, I'll end this here. And I'll see you guys for another one. Let me know what you guys think. And um, I'll catch you on another one. Bye-bye.